Welcome everybody. I'm quite surprised that you didn't escape to eat something because it's already noon. Um, okay, so we will, well, I will try to tell a story today. A story about a lot of uh, waiting and a lot of challenges, you will see. So, uh, what we learned, I'm imagining two big symphony based applications. I will try to help you not to spend your time when you try to do it. Uh, one question, uh, who of you is using Symfony, or better, like, who is not using Symfony? All of you are using Symfony? Perfect. Uh, just quickly about me, so I'm a co-founder, which also means I do a lot of these things uh, listed here, probably maybe even more. Um, from Croatia, a small web agency. Uh, we also have 15 years of experience in various content-centric solutions using Easy since 2004 and Symfony since 2013. Uh, we also do some tooling, which we hopefully will open source next year. Uh, some solutions for easier uh, building websites. And we also organize a web summer camp Anybody heard about Web Summer Camp? Okay, that's good. So now you know. <laughs> uh, it's in Croatia. <laughs> so how this story, sta story started? Uh, well, it usually comes from the clients. Like, we had a situation where a lot of our clients and a lot of projects, we, uh, we needed to kind of mix content management systems with e-commerce features. So until recently, it was usually done by, you have like a CMS and then you have a e-commerce system, maybe a Magento or, uh, or a PrestaShop, whatever. And then you kind of integrate this. But for us, it started to be a bit problematic because we, we needed some really interesting stuff to be built, like con uh, content marketing for products, meaning you need to put on the same page uh, the products with the related content. Or, for example, you want to sell content, so you need e-commerce features uh, uh, for content. Uh, so uh, our stack, I already mentioned, is content management with Easy Publish or Easy Platform, which is called, uh, the, the next generation is called. And also we chose Celius as our uh, e-commerce platform that we will work on. Um, just briefly, so easy. It's open sourced in 1999. That's a lot time ago. It's 18 years ago. A PHP uh, CMS from Norway. It's actually started to refactor uh, in 2011, like many other systems. And uh, it was released uh, two years ago. It's based on Symfony. And it's still quite uh, uh, suitable for our pro projects. And there is a connection to Poland. There is an uh, uh, office in Katowice. I think I see some easy people there. So uh, Silius, another connection to Poland. Uh, yeah, was uh, based on Symphony 2, founded by Pavel. I don't know to pronounce his last name, sorry. It's a bit too complicated for me. Um, it used really uh, some modern design patterns, a lot of BDD, uh, a lot of power from Symfony 2, etc. Uh, actually, the version 1 stable was released, uh, was it two months ago or something like that? Uh, another great guy, Lukas Kahwe. Uh, who is quite experienced and known in Symfony world, he was really surprised when he you know, started to run test suits of Silius and you see all the feature sets explain what uh, the product can do. Um, I actually took the opportunity to go and meet Pavel in Lodge three days ago. So, uh, great guy. Uh, so, back to the topic, Easy and Silius, we needed to integrate. So a usual situation or a usual use case is that 
you establish remote connections via standard protocols. And this is like REST APIs, SOAP, uh, any kind of uh, integration that involves that you access a remote system. So it basically means that you treat the remote system as a black box and it's of course completely uh, independently run, maybe on another system or in the cloud, in another continent, whatever. And there are some buzzwords around lately about you know microservices, serverless and stuff like that. So you actually want to decouple your application as much as possible and then use uh, those uh, interf REST interface, for example, to, to connect, which is great. It's perfectly uh, good in most of the situations. Uh, but the interesting thing is that we have a symphony as a common denominator for those two systems. Uh, Easy and Silius are both based on full stack symphony. So what does this mean? It means they have the same database access, way uh, same template engine, so same service container, logging events, caching, security. Probably forgot all. This is maybe a third of it. So a lot of this is actually the same for both systems. So the kind of idea is why don't we try to tightly integrate it as opposed to loosely, which means that we could try to have both systems on the same framework and the same instance of the framework and uh, explore what, quick, what could we do with that. So uh, I'm suggesting a new buzzword, coupling the decouples. So every, everybody is decoupling, so we are trying to couple it back, which is completely uh, uh, strange in, the, in, in 2017. Yeah, but why not? So uh, yeah, challenge. We got a first project, a suitable project in 2015. Uh, we also have great uh, uh, support by our partner Locastic, also from Croatia, which they had Silius know-how. We were a bit beginners into Silius. We had easy know-how, but no Silius know-how. And we based our integration on easy. What was that? On easy published 2014-11, which is a bit oldish now. Silius 014, very old now, and also Symphony 2.5 very old now, but that was 2015. Uh, we also, once we were happy with the project, we also open sourced it in mid-2015. So we have, just to explain, a couple of repos. So we had this easy published community Silius repo. You can still find it on GitHub with the merged easy and Silius uh, applications. And we also have additional bundle which provides the gluing features between Easy and Silius. I'll explain it later. So these were the repos at the beginning. In the meanwhile, what happened is Easy Platform version 1 was released, Silius version 1 was released, and a lot of things changed, especially in the Silius world. Uh, so now we are working, or we are almost done with the new repo, which is the Easy Platform Silius repo. And uh, the, the, the old one is deprecated because it uses very old Cilius and very old Easy. It was too, too different to continue on the same uh, repo, so we just started from scratch. And we still have this gluing bundle. The, the, the support for the old is tagged by version 1, so currently uh, master is compatible with the, with the new app repo and it will be tagged as version 2. So, uh, what about this glue? So what does it have? It, have, it has, uh, first thing, it, it has a field type for easy, which actually enables us to link Cilius products directly. So that gives us the possibility to have the complete Cilius product inside the easy content. And this is kind of the, uh, the, the relation between uh, those two. And all the, all, the, uh, all, the, all the gluing or all the, the features are implemented by simply calling uh, or injecting uh, the right uh, service from Cilius and working with the API of Cilius, not the REST API, of course. And the, this field type is translatable, sortable, and we also have the, the 
the option that if the product is trashed in product uh, in sorry in Silius, then it's uh, it's uh, th there is an event triggered for easy to to hide that product, etc. Uh, so we also have uh, something uh, like an optional thing that uh, if we are showing the product from easy, like a product is a content type in easy, which embeds the product of Silius, then if you are in the Silius context, for example, in the, in the checkout phase, if you want to link back to the Silius, Silius product, which is not Silius product anymore, it's an easy object, then we need to generate a different URL. So it's not the original slug which is generated by, uh, by Silius, but it's a URL uh, generated by Easy. Uh, we need user providers. I will explain that later. We need authentication handlers, etc. We'll touch about touch that later. So wh what is working as expected? Uh, a lot of things. Uh, I will just name a couple of things. So for example, uh, it's very easy on the front side to make the application look like one application. Uh, and why is that? Because we have the temp template exten extending feature. So in the checkout process template, we just extend the base uh, template from the easy. And you have the headers, you have the footers, you have the design, etc. So the, the, the look and feel or the, the front side of the, of the site, it's very easy to make it like a one side, so it, it's not a, like a, a, another system in, uh, with another domain like shop dot something or everything is on the same page. Uh, yeah, database configuration is just you send the same parameters to uh, easy configuration and to silly configuration. Uh, dependency injection and service container or Symfony, it's really then trivial to use whatever you need from both systems. You could have controllers doing fetching easy objects, manipulating products from Silius. Very simple, if you know Symfony, of course. Uh, but let's talk about challenges. This is actually the, the main part. What were the challenges to do that? So, first thing, we have Composer, which is great, but we have two big systems with a lot of dependencies. That can be a bit difficult. I will explain later. We have routing, which is not that of an issue. We had a bit small things, but it went okay. Authentication, uh, that should work more or less, but we had some troubles. I will explain also later. Authorization, again, uh, we end up, that uh, ended up being the most difficult one because of uh, a lot of uh, backwards compatibility uh, problems uh, with new versions of Cilius. Uh, in the end, uh, you can even try to merge the interfaces, the admin interfaces. So let's talk about Composer. Uh, these are two big apps, so uh, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, uh, the point is that there's a lot of dependencies and some dependencies could conflict. So in our case, there was like uh, Doctrine versions, for example, and probably a bit, it was two years ago, so there was, there was some troubles. Uh, remember the Doctrine uh, problems? What you could do is, in the end, you can wait for the next release, which, is, which sucks, basically. Uh, the other thing is what you can, of course, do is kind of create pull requests to speed this up. And uh, what you could also do is try to do some composer magic. You know, you can say, okay, uh, uh, require me this package, but say it is another. It's called aliasing. And uh, that could work, but might also not work because it will install the packages, but then you will have some bugs. Uh, that's basically uh, the, the most complicated thing, but there is even more complicated situation because Cilius 1 Zero Beta dropped support for Symfony 2 at some point, and Easy was not still, still not supporting Symfony 2 at that time. So there was like a six months period which we couldn't do nothing basically because it's just 
yeah, you cannot combine it because it's completely different version of Symfony supported. Uh, what could be done, or we tried to do it, uh, Silly's created a temporary backwards compatibility branch, and then we did some composer magic, but it was a bit, yeah, didn't work out. There was a bit of issues there. So, uh, a nice side effect, you do learn some composer tricks. That's good. Jordi is happy. Uh, routing. Um, it doesn't need to be any problems involved. Uh, what is important is that both systems support chain router from Symfony CMF. If that is true, then it should not be problems. Of course, there was some related bugs to it. But in the end, if the chain router, if you can configure the chain router, then you can just call uh, uh, each router uh, one by one. It's even simpler if both systems don't uh, use any custom uh, routing. If they use uh, if they use the system router, then you don't need the chain router as well. What you of course need to do is uh, just to be sure you, you would like to prefix everything on one system. So we chose to prefix everything uh, which is Silius, like starting with slash shop, for example. Uh, we also did what I mentioned is we uh, we, we kind of integrated easy generating into Cilius, but this is an optional, so we, we needed to, to make a configuration for that if you do need it. Otherwise, uh, if you disable this, then Symfony, uh, sorry, Cilius routes will be generated uh, as always. Uh, authentication. So if you install two systems, you make routing work, then if you go to these routes and you try to authenticate, it should work separately. So uh, you go to easy route, there's an admin uh, login, you log in, it works. If you go to Cilius uh, shop or admin, uh, if you try to log in with the user of Cilius, it should work. So separately, it should work. But we want that we don't have separate users. That's the idea. So, uh, Cilius, uh, the older version supported the first user bundle. The new versions complicated things a lot. Uh, they more or less re-ramped a lot of things there and even made two user providers in, in Symfony. I will get back to that later. And Easy has a custom user provider. So uh, what we did, uh, we, uh, we created a configuration in Symfony Firewall to support this. Uh, we needed to do some security listeners for single sign-on so that you actually, when you go to a Cilius admin login, and if you try to log in with the easy admin, that it actually authenticates you. And it works with a security event listener. You can do that. Um, of course, when you log in with this user, which is an easy user to a Cilius uh, context, Cilius doesn't know what the hell is this user about. It just authenticates it. So if you use in the code, if you say, "Is user logged in?" Well, it is logged. I mean, user is logged in. You will get the true, or true or uh, bull, true boolean. But what uh, if that uh, user needs to have some roles, or if he needs to uh, do something, then it's we 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 have a problem. So, just to quickly, I forgot this. We also had some problems with the security listener because at that point, easy was presuming a class of the user, so we needed to do a pull request so that we actually can uh, manipulate or pass the Cilius user too easy. So again, there were some pull requests going on there. Uh, back to authorization. So hopefully you know what is authentication, what is authorization. I will just repeat for, for sure. So. Authenticating is just making sure that 
the user did you know enter the right password and that this is the user but what user can do in the system that's authorization that's a completely different thing so uh, for authorization to work across two systems you need to somehow connect the two users like you have an admin in easy you have an admin in Silius. so somehow we need to connect those two users so that when I log in as an easy admin to Silius admin that he actually knows that I'm the admin. So, uh, of course, uh, this tends to be a bit complicated. So if you don't need to do this, uh, it's better not going in that direction. So, for example, uh, in our use case, uh, we needed the admins to be uh, integrated or connected, but for the users of the site, in our first project, we didn't have to do uh, the connection because those users didn't uh, have anything to do with content. They were shop users, so there was no features like commenting on the content pages, etc. If you need this, then you need to also integrate those shop users with the CMS users. So uh, what we actually did is, just for start, we did create a script where you can enter, uh, you know, connect to two users from both systems. Um, of course, we would need to do, and still we need to do, is to create this automatically. So when a user is created in one system, that it gets uh, automatically created in the other system. With via some posts update, create user events, etc. This needs to be done eventually when we first hit the project that needs that. So back to troubles with Silius 1. Uh, what happened is a lot of uh, breaks, uh, backwards compatibility breaks, or even bigger refactorings was between the last zero version, zero point something, and one zero alpha. There was big refactoring, and then again some refactoring with beta, and then again some refactoring before stable, don't ask me why. You know the guy you can talk to in Polish if you want to learn more. Uh, so uh, one thing that hit us really hard was this user management refactoring. Basically, they separated admin users from shop users completely in the database. Everything is completely separated. And this means that all user products, everything is separated. And admin of the shop cannot log in on the front side of the shop and the vice versa. So it's, it, it, it really was troublesome how to do this. So what we ended up is we needed to then create a composite user provider, which actually handles all three providers below that and somehow transparently uh, handles that. That was a bit of, uh, yeah, uh, not easy. So if you have these user, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, user authentication and user authorization working, what you could do then is actually integrate on the user interface level. And not just the front side, but also the admin part. So uh, we then wanted to merge the admin interface together. And in most cases, uh, it will not be very straightforward because you might have different, uh, different front-end architectures. So you, for example, if you have a one interface which is like, I don't know, Angular, JS based, and the other one is purely a bit of CSS and templates, then of course it will be difficult. In our case, we had, uh, we had uh, uh, our improved uh, easy administration interface was mostly about a simple admin uh, theme uh, with a bit of bootstrap, and the Cilius uh, administration interface uses semantic UI front-end framework. So we needed, again, a bit of full requests to do. And, but in the end, uh, it looks like this. On the left side, you see a menu, which is the easy 
administration interface with you know content hierarchy, media library, etc. And then we added a Silius e-commerce, and then everything right on that side is Silius. So it's it works in the same interface. We you know user users can log in in the same uh, interface and work with content and product. That, also depending on their uh, user roles, etc. So uh, this currently I cannot show you with the, with the newest version because we didn't finalize the newest version. We still need to uh, uh, upgrade from beta 2 to stable and then do this, uh, do this integration, uh, recheck again, etc. But this is uh, what happened with the first integ integration. We had this. Uh, great success. Uh, so, uh, trying to wrap up. So, what are the good things? Well, I think the best or the, the biggest gain that you have is that you actually can do a lot of things uh, uh, with this. You, you are not just bound to uh, what you have from the REST APIs from the, uh, from the system. So, like, Silius has a REST API, Easy has a REST API, but they are a subset of features. Uh, with this, you can go under the hood and do a lot of things that you might need. You could uh, do a single admin interface, which is good for clients. You, they don't have two interfaces, they have one. And uh, what you could do is, you know, if you have a separate independent archi uh, services architecture, sometimes you need to do uh, like integration tests and you sometimes uh, figure out problems later in development stage. Now, if you have both systems actually in the same instance, some problems could be found earlier. Uh, of course, there are uh, not good news. Uh, it's, it's relatively complex. You need to be good at both systems. You cannot say, okay, I will just integrate this and not know much about the, the, that other system. It's not a small bundle. It's usually, I can show you, of course, the, the number of Silius bundles is, is quite high. Number of easy bundles is also not very low. So it's, uh, it, it, the complexity is big and you need to know what you're doing. In our case, we were good experts with easy. We had the luck to have also our partners for Silius. Without them, it would be much harder. And I would say the biggest problem is that you actually now depend on two Roadmaps. So for us, what happened is that one uh, uh, one side decided to ditch Symphony 2, the other side was a bit slower, and then you just cannot do much. So you are depending on two roadmaps. That's you know, quite quite frustrating, but you cannot do anything about it. And maybe you could have some performance issues because you have you know you put two big things. On one on, it, on each other, and maybe not in production. If you know, Symphony take care, takes care of a lot of this uh, and caches and stuff. But you know, you doing composer update. Maybe you should do a memory lim limit minus one, and then it uses all of your memory uh, because of the big dependency graph. There are probably more problems. I just wanted to stress these three out. Uh, what we learned, uh, in the process, we learned a lot about Symfony and Composer. This is a good uh, thing because you, you sometimes you don't uh, learn these things because you are not stretching the limits of the, of the framework and Composer. Uh, we really appreciate good roadmap, semantic versioning and extensible code because, you know, if you need to change a behavior of, a, of one of the systems, you, uh, you, uh, uh, you, you appreciate that you can actually extend it, replace some feature via uh, service container. And you appreciate service uh, uh, semantic versioning because you are sure that any uh, new minor version will not break anything. And of course, roadmaps. You, if, if there is something in the in the plans that you can plan for uh, up front. So if 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 it's uh, uh, okay, we need to drop support for Symphony 2. That's okay, but we will do it in uh, in one year time or something like that. But 
Symphony itself does it very well, if you know Symphony. So Symphony 2.8, uh, it's still LTS. Symphony 3.4, which is coming, will be LTS, etc. And that's, that's really good in this use case. And Symphony does a lot of lifting. So I didn't talk much about all the things that you actually have already with Symphony. That doesn't make sense in this talk, but we are, I was more talking about challenges. Uh, but Symphony really does a lot of things for you and helps you a lot. And we will see with Flex coming, uh, it might be much easier. We will, we will see. First, we, those two systems need to support Flex somehow. Then we might uh, make this uh, much easier, in, in an easier way. If you knew, need to do something similar, couple of things. You need to have the expertise on Symfony of both systems. Don't try to do it uh, without knowing what you're doing, of course. Uh, you need to check the roadmaps and release cycles. So in, in some cases, if they are not aligned, you are doomed or you will have a lot of trouble. Uh, it's also good to check how pull requests are actually merged. You know, is it something that you need to wait for a year? Maybe if you were at uh, Alan's talk last night, he was talking about how to do patching with Composer. That might help in the, in the, use ca in the, in the situation where you need to wait a lot to, for requests to be merged. Uh, what I also didn't mention uh, so far, but it's also important, you need to check the licensing of both systems. So in this case, uh, Silius is MIT license. Uh, easy platform is GPL2, so you need to release uh, your integration if, if you want to release it publicly. It needs to be GPL version 2, so you need to know what license uh, is applicable. Maybe it's even in some cases the, the licenses are not even compatible, so you need to check that also. Uh, conclusion, it's probably an overkill, yes. Uh, for most of the use cases, you would not do this. Uh, but if you need like access to a lot of underlying features of both systems, if you want a single UI uh, for the administration and for the front side, and you want some better control of the authorizations in, in, uh, for both systems, then maybe it makes sense. But you will have some troubles, I'm sure. Uh, thank you. I like questions. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it, no it, it was a temporary situation. So Easy Platform now supports Symfony 3. But it was like a six-month period which we were basically waiting to, to clear some things uh, on Easy side. And then once that was done, then we were able to merge. Okay. Uh, for example, if you want to integrate uh, Sirius uh, application with your application, your app, not Easy, uh, it's better, in your opinion, to choose a user from Easy Platform Depends on the use case. So, if you if you are talking about an e-commerce system, probably you will probably need the systems. Uh, sorry, the users to be in Silius because they need to add things to basket. You need to uh, they need to follow the checkout process. So, they you need the users. Uh, the question is, do you need it on the other side? So, if if those same users needs to comment a product or it, if he needs to do something which is not anonymously, then you need it, the user also uh, existing in the easy systems and authorize it, what the user can do or not. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, if, if the users are already there, then it's, it should be easy to use the, the command line tool as an example to connect those users. So you can find the users via emails. You know, you have two emails, you can pretty sh be sure that they are the same, right? So you can then connect them. It creates a, uh, there is a table on the database for that that uh, connects those two users. And then the user provider actually knows about this. That, you, uh, th that those two are th the same. And then it will, when, you, when that user logs in, it will be logged in in both systems. And because the users exist in both systems, the authorization for that system will work as well. Yeah. Any other questions? Depends on the use case. Uh, first of all, the, you might need only few things. Like you need only from like you could only use from Cilius like uh, a product catalog, and then you use the product catalog bundle, and that's it. That's great. But if you need more features, features, then trying to kind of only bundle these things, it, in the end it might be even more work. Because that, th those bundles in Cilius need to be perfectly independent from each other and that's easy to say. But in practice they depend on each other. And then you end up again depending everything because it's easier. It's, it's too, it's, it tends to be too difficult to kind of separate and make each of the bundle work without the rest. So in, in theory it should be like that, but in practice maybe all these bundles are not perfectly independent from each other. And then you end up, end up uh, in the end uh, depending basically requiring everything. So in our case we needed a lot of this, so we needed maybe 60-70% of the bundles. Then we said, okay, it's, it's easier to, to bundle everything. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. The point is now we are updating everything when, when we have a, a new release. Uh, we we update it. So from the from the main repo, from the application repo. And of course we trust that the semantic versioning, so that if you pull in something which is minor that it will not break, which didn't, wasn't the case in, in previously, but I think now that Cilius 1 stable is released, it will be uh, more stable regarding that. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.